I want to I want to say something on this for a minute. Forget him for a moment. When it comes to Mikel Arteta, if we look at his significant signings where he's put proper money into them since he's been the Ars- full-time Arsenal manager, summer signings. Party and Gabriel, he's only two significant signings in his first summer. The rest were free transfers or like, like Pablo Mari was 6 million euros. Partey and Gabriel, would we say they've been a success for Arsenal? Yep. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, yeah. the, the, the next season, the significant signings over the, the 20 million pound mark. Aaron Ramsdale, Martin Odegaard, Ben White. Yeah, they've been very good signings. Very good. They successes? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Last season, the significant signings over 20 million, including the January window. Trossard, Kivior, Zinchenko, Vieira, Gabriel Jesus. I would say probably only Vieira oh, yeah. at the moment is the one who is flagging, but he could improve this year. So of all the major signings that Mikel Arteta has made in three years, we would probably look at one as he's, he's really not hit the heights. Kivior, you'd say the, the jury's still out. He signed in the January. But the rest of them, for me, as an outsider looking in, I don't see what the issue is. Yes, the free transfer of William was poor. You know, someone says to me, oh, he signed Runnison. Runnison was a 2 million euro deal. Who's deeping that as a bad signing? No one even thinks about it. He's a backup goalkeeper. All of the signings made by their manager, they're they're, they're real, they're genuine, costly signings that have been the majority of their budget have all been a success. And this is my question to people doubting Mikel Arteta. If all of those signings are pretty much... Someone said Lokonga. Lokonga costs about 13, 14 million pounds. So, again... You can throw Lukonga in, but he was a 13 million pound signing. That is not a risky, big money signing. I said over 20 million pounds here. Not- Somebody's coming good anyway. Don't worry yeah. about that. And, and, again, and if you want to throw him in, fine, throw him in. So one complete failure and one the jury is still out on. And the rest have been a success. Why would that not give Arsenal fans faith in backing your manager's talent ID and ability to pick the right players for his system. But Sorry, genuine there, question. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big there's a there's a big difference here, right? Because if you were bringing in Kai Havertz, let's say for forty million, right? No, no brainer. The opportunity is there. He doesn't want to be at Chelsea anymore. His girlfriend loves London. He loves London. No brainer. Forty million, bring him in. Because I would say with that price tag, there's not as much. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's not, risk. there's not that much. Yeah. yeah, there's not that much risk. I would say it's, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's cheaper, isn't it? But sixty million. If you're saying sixty million, then everyone's gonna expect a lot more. This, that, that means that's gonna be a player that's probably gonna be in the starting eleven, right? Yeah. And, and he's again, gonna start at the 10-8, which also underlines my point that he's not gonna be but, playing up top. But that's, that's what I'm saying, though, Jess. But the or thing Martin is, or Jesus. From, from what I've, from what I've seen of him in the past three years, he's been underwhelming. He hasn't been the worst player. I know Lewis, Lewis hates Havertz, right? But for me, I actually think he's, he's all right, right? And I, I did say if he went to Madrid, he would have done better there because again, different league, a lot more space, a lot more time on the ball to actually think about your next steps, right? But when I'm looking at Havertz in left centre mid, if I ask you, Jess, what attributes do you think he has to play that role, right? I've asked mm-hmm. quite a lot of Arsenal fans. I asked Dowd the other day. He started that. rambling on. It, it, I'm sure that. he can answer it in a sec, right? But for me, from what I've seen of him the past three years, you can't just sweep that under the carpet. We've we've had more than enough, um, you know, uh, of a of a um, more, more than enough evidence here. He's had what 91 appearances, 19 goals in nine, 91 appearances. He's been played under various managers. All the managers have all started him. Right, he's played down the middle. He said he can play as a striker. So this thing about misprofiling him, I think it's overstated, to be honest with you. I just don't see the attributes that that you're seeing that allows him to play that left center mid role um and, and actually help you to win the league. Because your your next step is to win the league. And Havertz you, isn't gonna isn't gonna you, be that guy. Like he's not that guy. Just, can you describe our left center mid position and what what, what the attributes are? Because I actually don't think rivals understand what that position is for us. Ed, educate me on it. Educate me on it. Yeah, so the left center mid, the main part of the job, because we in 95% of games, we dominate possession, we dominate the game, we we run, we we do, you know, it's like ugh. I know that Jacka is like more of like somebody that people attribute to like defensive and being like a deep line playmaker. His main job for the entire time was just late man runs, connect with the left half space. So getting the ball out to Martinelli and build up, late man runs, goals, you know 
that kind of stuff. Like that was his main thing. He was like the extra man in midfield. Odegaard did all the orchestrating. He was the main guy getting us, up. you know, it's like him and Th Thomas party were doing all the midfielding and Jack was more like almost like a second striker. He was somebody that would play off of Jesus, get in that striker position. You would often see him just kind of like, you know, getting into the box. I think Kai Havertz, like the only other player that got more runs into the box than Kai Havertz is Erling Holland. He definitely has those attributes to make those late mat runs and also to connect with the left half space with Martinelli, be creative, do those little slip balls into, you know, Saka and Jesus and play off of the striker. It makes so much sense to me. And when you don't have Zinchenko, because if we don't play with Zinchenko inverted on that side and you put another center back there and you firm things up on that side, you're not looking for Xhaka to have to come back and defend as much. So it just becomes a player as the extra midfielder that's in there to score goals, get assists, and be with the half space and do his thing. Like, it makes he, sense. He, Jess, look, he made all those runs, but he scored nine goals all season. He scored nine goals. Felix scored four goals and came in in January. And by the way, Felix got a red card in his first game, right? So he missed three of, three of those games. When Lampard mm -hmm. came back, Felix wasn't even starting for us, and he scored four goals. Havertz was starting every single game, making those runs like you mentioned there, and scored nine goals. This guy's XG is one of the worst seven. in the league. And Jacka worst... scored seven. Yeah, but Jacka played. Jacka played in left centre mid and scored seven goals. Two less than Havertz, who played up top all season. So you, this thing, this thing, of, this thing of him. This, this thing of him playing left centre mid and getting more goals. I don't understand the logic because when he's been played up front and had all these chances, he hasn't been getting the goals that we needed from him. We've been creating chances for Havertz. You know, it's not. It's not a team where, you know, it's not. It's not a situation where we haven't been creating chances. When Potter was here. It was always, oh, you know, Chelsea create all of these chances, but we can't bury them. And why was that? Kai Havertz. We had him playing up top. He had Aubameyang on the bench. You know, he had Lukaku bench when Lukaku was here. Time and time again, he missed his chances. So I just don't understand how he's going to go into midfield and start burying all these chances because his finish is poor, right? He scores the odd goal outside the box for Germany and he's done it for, for us as well. But he's not a great finisher. He's not. So he's not a better finisher than Jesus, who you need to upgrade on. He's not a better upgrade than Xhaka as a left centre mid. So I just don't understand how he's going to come in in that 11 and move you to that next level. He, he so doesn't do I it. Want you, I want you to go back and look at the stats from Xhaka and Odegaard and Saka before they worked with Mikel Arteta. Not a single one of them were finishers. Now all of them are much better finishers. Like, I'm sorry, but when every single attacker that you guys have over the last couple of years has went there and died... I don't really think that I'm going to look at what you guys do and say it's the players and it's not the club. I'm well, just not. Like, I'm question, sorry. This is the question I wanted to ask you, Don. Do you not mm. think Mikel Arteta has got the coaching capabilities to turn all those chances? And some of the chances that Kai Havertz misses, miss, miss Chelsea appear to me easier to score than miss. Yeah. Do you yeah. not think a manager with the arm around his shoulder great man management skills, if he gets this player confident like he was when he first joined Chelsea and starts mm. scoring 12, 13, 14, 15 goals a season as a kind of mm. attacking midfield hybrid role, is that not going to be then devastating for Chelsea that you've lost a highly, a potentially highly potent player? Is there no chance in your mm. opinion that Arteta turns his career around? Yeah, I think, look, like I said, I rate Arteta as a coach. I, I do think he's going to, we're, we're going to see a better Havertz at, at, um, at Arsenal, right? But, for me, from what I've seen, like I've said, I'm gonna to have to see it. I'm going. I'm gonna to have to see it because the chances that I'm, I've seen this guy miss. I'm sorry, you've been playing football now for how long? You know, he broke through at what, 17 in, in Germany. These are chances that you should be burying with your eyes closed, and he he was struggling to do it. So I get the coaching aspect. You know, he he, he was coached by Lampard. He was coached by Potter. He was coached by Tuchel, who a lot of people don't rate when it comes to his attackers. But honestly, you have to look at you have to look at yourself as a player and. To be honest with you, I'm not sure about his mentality as well. I think he's going to definitely need a mentality shift. You know, you guys are switched on. Yeah. I, I look at Havertz like a... I, I look at him as a passenger, right? And Arsenal don't have time for passengers. So I, you are going to have to change his mentality. Yeah. Otherwise, he could end up being a martial with all this potential and doesn't yeah. live up to it. Or he so, just needs I, to I, leave I, you guys and yeah. just... I, I, understand, I understand. Take him, that. listen. Give us our yeah, 60. I, we'll, we'll I understand that. that, guys. As a few people in the comments said to me earlier, but what about Tavares, Terry? He was a flop. He was a £6 million signing. Again, he didn't work out. But we're not going to suddenly start calling £6 million signings an indication of bad talent ID. It's a very... I mean, you, Arsenal will probably make a profit on him when they sell him.